What's up guys, Frey here. Today's video is going to be the first of many on my channel where I'm targeting king salmon in the rivers. It's a really exciting time of year. I know you guys love to see it and obviously it's one of my favorite things to do. So I'm going to give it my best shot. It is early though. I've only got so much skein and so much gas money so I'm going to try to take it slow early and wait till the fish are really here. But I did have a day off today so I'm out here going to give it my best shot and then later today going to hit the lake and do some jigging which I'm more optimistic about. But Figure I'll hit the river for a little bit. Just got the center pin rig for skiing. I got a hot and hot on the spinning rod, so I'm gonna go out, just get the camera rolling just in case something happens and see how it goes. I mean, there's boats spread out. It looks like there's a decent amount of boats on that other bank upstream, too. Yeah. Fish. <laughs> Does it, is it a fish? Yeah, it's fish. It's not fighting like crazy. It's definitely big. Yeah. What is that? That's not a king, dude. Hold on. I think it is. It's a walleye, dude. Oh. Big walleye. Deep walleye. Huge walleye. Huge walleye. <laughs> Holy oh, yeah. Freaking oh, walleye! Walleye! <laughs> Alright guys, we're out here jigging for kings. We've been out here for probably two hours. I knew this thing didn't feel quite right when I hooked it. But take it. It's an awesome walleye. It's one of the biggest ever for Michigan for sure. It's going to eat good. We're going to keep digging. Hopeful for a salmon, but we'll take it. All right, guys. Unfortunately, no salmon, but still want to post the video because I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to fish next. And I've got some fresh walleye to cook, so I haven't done a catch and cook in a while. And while the fish is cooking, I'm going to do a salmon q and A. I just put out something on Instagram saying for people to ask me their questions, whatever they got about Michigan salmon fishing, skein fishing, that kind of thing. I've already got a bunch of questions, so while that's cooking, I'm just gonna answer the questions, but first we gotta get this thing in the oven. I'm gonna try to bake the walleye, which is something I've never done before, so I've got two nice pieces of it there, and then I'm gonna bake it with some mushrooms and onions. These mushrooms are actually really cool. I just found these the other day. They're black trumpet mushrooms. They're like a wild edible, and they have amazing flavor. I just tried some the other morning, and they're great, so we're gonna do that. We're just gonna put some butter on it, some spices and let it bake. And while it's in there, I'll go through the questions. I've already got at least 20 or 30, so hopefully I can get to everyone's questions. Hopefully I can help some of you guys. I'm no expert by any means, but I get these questions all the time, so hopefully I can help somebody out with it. All right, guys, I'm kind of winging it here as usual. I'm literally just gonna season these fish with that stuff and then some salt and pepper. Cover them with butter and let them bake. Can't see it tasting bad. I mean, it's good fresh walleye. You expert cooks will probably say I butcher it, but. I'm just gonna start with these guys. Sure, we'll end up adding more butter at the end. I wish I had lemon, but I don't. I really don't feel like going to the store. So we're gonna rock with this. Just make sure there's plenty of butter on these. I went a little overkill with the mushrooms and onions, but we're gonna use them because they really do have amazing flavor on their own. And um, it'll add to the fish as well. This looks a little more gourmet than my average Q 
campfire stuff, so I'm pretty excited. Alright guys, so I just got the fish in there. I've already got more questions than I can answer in the time that this fish is cooking, so I'm going to try to go fast. Uh, try to get to the more important ones. Let's see. Skein hook size and salmon leader test. I think I'm going to get this one a lot. Um, I run blood run skein hooks for my skein hooks, and usually I run 2 watt because the 3 watt size is very close to the half inch mark that's like a regulation on certain rivers here in Michigan. You can't have bigger than half inch hooks, hook gap I should say, and um, ideally I'd probably run a 3 watt, but the 2 watt works good, and a lot of times I run it with a stinger hook, a size 2 tail out hook. Um, so hopefully that helps. And then leader test. Last year I almost exclusively ran 15 pound blood run fluoro and that worked pretty well for me. Um, early season, you might want to run 20. Um, depends where you fish really. If you fish big open rivers, you can probably get away with 12. I don't know, 15 has been a good all around size for me. And I think I'll probably get that question a lot. So best hook size for running skein, two or three out skein of hook. Um, make sure you pay attention to your regulations and um, I don't know where you guys fish. Obviously, I'm from Michigan, so we have a half-inch gap on a lot of our rivers, so i got to be careful about that. This is a good question. Um, how would you approach targeting salmon with skein in places where people are, for lack of better description, flossing the shit out of them? Uh, that's such a good question, and um, a lot of where I did skein fish last year was just right in the middle of it. Um, some people don't realize that, but I literally am right in the middle. A lot of times I walk down to go to my spots and I walk right back to my car because there's no room. And it's not like there's other people bobber fishing. It's just, you know, the usual chuck and duck, snag, floss, whatever you can do. Um, but if you can find space, those same fish will bite, uh, especially if you can get to them when they've sat for a little while. But um, the best thing I've done, honestly, is just ignore the people around you. And um, obviously you have to be considerate, but if you can get you don't need, you know, a big long center pin drift. A lot of the places where we fish, it's like you got 10 feet of drift and that's enough if you can get your bait down. Um, and yeah, if the water's dirty enough, especially that's that's the days you want to be out there with skein because even though there's chuck and duck rigs everywhere, those fish aren't always spooked. And we really do, you can catch skein fish in the middle of the day right next to people that have been chuck and ducking for hours. So sometimes it almost, in my opinion, irritates those fish to the point where if you give them a real presentation, they hit. And that's especially been true with the spinners that I toss um, outside of skein fishing. That's like my next best thing is big inline spinners. And that's always right in the floss water too. I think those fish are probably just pissed off at what they're being put through. But anyways, that's a really good question. I could probably spend an hour on it. What are the best tactics for float or fly fishing late September coho? Um, I really struggled with coho last year, so I can't really say too much about it. Um, Fly fishing, always black streamers for me. I've shown many times that they'll chase those and they'll eat those in any stage of running, whether they're chrome or they're spawning. But um, float fishing, I have really struggled with them. I always seem to catch jack coho on skein. I don't know, well, I've caught a few. I've caught a few late season, but I rarely catch adult coho on bobbers. Um, I don't know why. I always, I've ran skein through some holes that were just stacked up with coho, and it hasn't happened for me, so... I wish I could help more, but not really an expert on that. Good question. Uh, not for me, because I'm not good at this stuff, but tapering split shot. And uh, should the bait be drifting in front of, even with, or behind the float? Um, I think if you talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about, like uh, Danny Colville would be a good example. He has lots of videos that show diagrams of how your presentation is supposed to look. Um, I'm pretty sure the point is you want your presentation to be in front of the float. So you have tension on your float. Your float's here with the current and your bait's here so they see your bait first. Um, and there's a lot of different techniques for that. Tapering split shot. With skein fishing especially since that's what we're talking about, I almost exclusively just run two sizes shot, big and small. Um, this one's SSG so the nice thing about blood run is um. The, the packaging it says you know what gram so it's easy to match it up with the float and I got lots of questions on here too this will just go over all those questions sorry I can't you know pick through everyone but there's a ton about shot pattern about matching shot floats and picking floats 
when it comes to matching shot with floats, it really is just simple math. Um, it's something I'm pretty infamous for being really bad with math and numbers, but this makes it easy. I mean, you can literally just do addition and uh, take your size, multiply it by how many there is. And um, with an 18 gram float, you're supposed to balance it with 18 grams of shot, which is a lot, but um, it helps you punch down, especially with skein. Um, with skein shot patterns, it is not important really how they're tapered as much as you need to have weight down low so that um, if you've ever fished with a big chunk of skein, it flutters in the water and it's, it needs to be forced down or else you might drift for 20 feet and your skein's still just hovering up. So uh, these are pretty much the smallest shot I use with skein is these triple A's on my leader. And I make sure I use enough to get that bait down because I don't think kings have proven to be very leader shy or shy of shot and like in the situations where they're actually biting skein. So you just want to make sure that it's down in their face. That's the most important part. Um, and some people ask about depth as well. Sorry, I'm not addressing specific stuff, but it's all, there's so much, and I'm, I'm just trying to help. Um, when you're skein fishing and you're setting your depth, you really do not want to be dragging bottom. It's not like steelhead fishing, or like steelhead fishing with beads or anything like that. Um, if you're dragging bottom, you're probably going to be foul hooking a lot of fish, and you got to be just above them. That's how you get those really good bobber downs that you see in our videos where the bobber's there and it's just gone. That's because that bait is about a foot above those fish and they come up, grab it, and go right back down where they're sitting. So uh, that's, in my opinion, the best way to approach those fish. You don't want to go under them or on their nose. A lot of times that'll bother them, especially if you're fishing for fish that are freaked out, been flossed on or whatever. Uh, I like to give them some space and let them eat it. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Fish is looking good. All right. I addressed... A lot of the basic rigging questions with some vague opinions and um, I know what a lot of you guys want is very specific diagrams and you know this length of leader this exact stuff and I can't really give you that because I don't know where you guys fish I don't know what depth and current changes everything so for me it's comes down to I have 23 pound mainline to a swivel to my 15 20 pound fluorocarbon leader uh, whatever size you choose to use and then a big hook with a snell knot and lots of split shot like it's totally going to vary depending on where you fish so i can't you know i can't you know draw it out for you what you're going to need because it would be wrong if i draw it for one person it's going to be wrong for a bunch of other people so all i can do is kind of give pointers on my thought process um, and a lot of times i'm wrong so <laughs> you got to be careful about that i've only been doing this for you know I think last fall was the, the first fall where I felt comfortable going out with bobbers and skein, feeling like I was actually going to hook stuff. So you got to take everything I say skeptically. Like I'm trying my best out here to help you guys, but I'm not the expert. The experts will not tell you because they work too hard for what they know. This is a good question. If you don't have skein to use, what do you recommend using during the skein bite? Uh, that's a tricky question. Um, if you have loose eggs, kings eat spawn bags for sure. Coho eat spawn bags for sure. Um, but, you know, my go-to, I mentioned before, outside of skein, probably in the rivers, is a big inline spinner, like an Arctic spinner. That's the brand we use here in Michigan. Um, I almost don't want to tell people because I've been able to go into some really high-pressured areas and it always seems like you can buy at least one bite with a spinner. And... Um, most people are throwing Fire Tiger Thunder Sticks or Hot and Tots, which are both good. But for me, I've just had really good luck with the spinners. So as far as under a float um, in Kings, I'm not sure what you would run besides skein. I think if you run double bead rigs under floats, which a lot of people do, I've done in the past, I think it's pretty sketchy in terms of whether they're biting or not. Um, I do think that Kings bite beads as droppers sometimes, but I feel like there's got to be that scent there if you ask me, but um, beads under a float. Some people will tell you they slam it. Some people will tell you it drifts in their mouth. I don't know, I'm not a king salmon, so um, whatever you feel like. I've got a lot of questions of, have you gone out for them lately? Are they showing up? Um, barely. So <laughs> if I had been catching them, you guys would see. So uh, no luck for me so far. On that note, uh, I think I'm going to pull a fish and eat it. 
and maybe I'll answer a few more, but I feel like we're getting into a pretty long video at this point, so. Uh, and I'm hungry, so. That's looking pretty good to me. Looks like the onions are crispy. I think that fish is gonna flake just fine. Yep, yeah, that's done. I'm super excited. All right guys, this turned out amazing. Um, obviously I put tons of butter on it, so there's no way it's gonna be bad. I think I'm gonna have a few bites of this. I'm gonna end the video and then I'll answer everyone's questions through the DMs just to make sure everyone, um, hopefully I can help. So that's just perfect fish right there. Perfect fresh walleye. That's very good. Um, it's a little bit mild. I definitely could have put more spice on it. Um, but I can literally taste the mushroom in this fish, um, which is good because these mushrooms have an amazing flavor on their own. This is just plain fish right here. Very good. And then um, I'm totally in love with these mushrooms right now. A little onion in there. You can just eat them plain. They're so good. This was a great dish, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope the video helped you out a little bit. Uh, we got to be patient with these salmon. Um, I know you guys want to see the videos really bad, but hopefully as soon as possible, it gets them out for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.